three thousand a month to fifteen thousand a month to fifty thousand a month to eighty thousand a month to one hundred fifty thousand a month. I was still living at my grandma's house, sleeping on a twin bed in the same room as my parents, making one hundred fifty thousand a month, walking to the gym. Flex Lewis, you're straight out the lair. Our guest today has a journey of resilience, determination, and transformation. After being incarcerated for 10 years, he turned his life around and became a coach for fitness, wealth, and business. His personal experience has taught him the valuable discipline of hard work, the importance of having a growth mindset, and through his coaching, he empowers others to achieve their goals and unlock their true, full potential. We dive deep into his journey learn about his strategies for success, and gain insights into how we can apply it into our lives. Here's a podcast with the incredible Wes Watson. Wes Watson in the Dragon's Lair. What the the hell? We're going. We're rolling. We're rolling. Man, I see a Flex magazine behind me, one that I used to... I used to read it all the time in yeah. prison on my rack and it was pictures of you and it was in your backyard. You had your dogs, you had your life. Oh, it's shit. the one up here showing your life. Florida, the, yeah. the, the, the day in the life. And I was just like, man, one day when I get out of prison, I'm going to have a house, a car, a woman, some dogs. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and I still had years in prison and it would just motivate me so fucking much. So I'm just telling you, I'm sitting here now. This is awesome. Thank my you. Man. I appreciate it. I mean, we are, I would say new friends, right? I would say oh, that yeah, we we've, we've connected, we've we've done. Uh, um, well, I've been following you for a minute before we literally connected, and I I remember seeing your stuff coming over, just literally popping up, popping up on my feed. I was like, "Who is this guy? He's popping up all over." And then I went on your profile. I was like, "Fuck, this guy follows me." And then I, as soon as I started following more and more of your stuff, but listening to your message. Uh, before I even knew the backstory and stuff, man, there's not a day that goes by that you're not spitting gold. You have your own way and your own style that's unique to been, anybody. Been through fucking hell. When you've been through hell, it's very easy to pull that out. I mean, the gold fucking exists at the bottom. When you're at the top and you're winning, that's where most people, most people are actually losing. I spent so much time at the bottom and so much pain. I pulled all the gems from the fucking the below where most people have even known where existence could be and that's just it's it's what i prime myself with gratitude is learned at the bottom everything has got from the bottom when you actually faced true adversity because true adversity introduces a man to himself and and what is what is the story of wes watson we've got a lot of people new viewers that have seen you all over social media and let's be honest oh we got we got a mic uh show you oh there we go sounds good there we go um some people might have seen you, um, but not know the story. Kind of like, so take my viewers back to who Wes Watson is, how you got into social media, and how really you've gone and taken your message and blown the fuck up. I mean, it's been a crazy ride, but I grew up in Oceanside, California, San Diego. Surfer, skater, snowboarder. I mean, I just grew up wanting to smoke weed for free. I used to <laughs> smoke weed, I want to smoke for free. So I started selling. So I started selling weed at a young age. And um, I remember I went on a trip with my family at like 10. And they get, my mom gave me 100 bucks. And I was so shady even at 10. I just I said I lost the $100 like right when we went on the trip. <laughs> True like fucking I, I, hustler. Yeah, I lost, I lost that shit. <laughs> and then when I came back, I bought a quarter ounce. I bought a quarter ounce for, um, for 100 bucks. And then I broke it down into seven grams for 20 bucks, made 140. From there, ten, yeah, uh, seven grams for twenty each. So I made one hundred and forty off the the quarter I bought for hundred bucks. By the time I was fifteen, I bought a lifted Z seventy one truck cash. Had it for like eight months, and then had the brand new Escalade. I drove the brand new Escalade to high school on twenty threes. I was just a fucking hustler. I always found a way to make shit happen and. Selling weed and smoking for free and selling coke and other drugs was what we did at the time because we partied and we were those kids who just wanted to wanted some some validation like as a man like I got some money I got the I got mm. I got the stuff you know everyone kind of went through that that age group in my area where we were we were just trying to fund our own lifestyle and find out what the fuck worked so that turned into me getting a bunch of pounds. Pounds turned into hundreds of pounds. Hundreds of pounds turned into massive violence. Then I landed in prison for 10 fucking years. 
So I let it in prison for 10 fucking years for robbery in the first of an inhabited dwelling, burglary, battery, assault with a deadly weapon, the whole nine. So I got 10 fucking years for that. I'm going away for 10 fucking years at 25 years old. U.S. Marshals draw down, stick the AK-47 in my fucking face, and I know I know it's over. I didn't even know what I was getting busted for at that time because I'd been in trouble for so many fucking things. And I'd done so much dirt that I look at my chick at the time and I'm like, yeah, I'm fucked. So, so I go upstate for 10 years, and during that time incarcerated, I was still fucking up. I was still pushing dope. I was still doing my thing in prison. You guys think, like, getting busted and getting 10 years? Most pussy motherfuckers, if they got handcuffed for 10 hours, would be such a fucking blubbering mess pussy bitch broad of a man after 10 hours, they would be changed forever. I swear to God I'll change. And then... Give that. Give them ten days. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, "Fuck!" Like rewriting their whole life story. Give them ten weeks. Now their now their bills are defunct. Their life's actually getting fucked. Give them ten months. Everything's gone. Give them ten years. You're not even in the system anymore. I got out of fucking prison after ten years. They didn't even know who I was when I went to get a cell phone. They're like, "Who the fuck are you?" Yeah. There's nothing. I didn't have anything on my credit. I was nobody. I was wiped out of the system. I had to start over from scratch, and at 35, I got out with $200 to my name, but just a massively strong mindset with undeniable clarity and was able to get where I'm at today. And that was 10 years to the to the, pretty much the day, right? You was, you was locked up for. Doing that 10 years, something, there's obviously something changed, um, and I know your story, so I'm kind of like privy to this. You kind of broken up your your life story inside in different sectors. Um, if I'm, you know, not without put, you know speaking your own story, but you said for the first couple of years you oh, were, I was gangster as fuck. Yes, first couple of years I came in and I didn't see. No one sees the fucking light at the end of the tunnel when you get ten fucking years. So I get busted and I'm like, I'm gonna be the best at this prison shit. So I'm covered in all Cali gang ink that I earned. I mean, it says the car that I belong to in prison. If you're white and you go to prison, you're in a fucking gang full of white boys. That's what the fuck is. If Flex hits the line, it don't matter how big, how bad, who the fuck you think you are. You're MMA dude. You're a bodybuilder. You're the most badass fucking motherfucker on the planet. It don't matter. We got the numbers. Like, you're going to get served. You're going to listen. So you roll up with your bedroll, your fish kit. Here comes Flex. He's got his shit. And... They come to the block like, hey, what's up? Where's my rack at? So they go put you at your rack. You give them your paperwork. Your paperwork's what you've been charged with. Now, they're going to grab that paperwork. They're going to come bring it to me. Bring it to you. I'm going to see if you're fucking, if you're good or not. If you're not good, that means you're here for a rape, something with kids, or some charge that's not good. If you got busted for something like that, you're stabbed in the on the fucking spot. They're, they're going to try to fucking kill you. They're going to mark your face up so bad first off so everyone knows you're a piece of shit. But the fact is, is once you hit the line and you're good, you're going to come meet me. Or you're going to meet the dude who's got the keys to the yard or the block. And they're going to tell you, hey, anything I fucking ask you, the answer is yes. And mm-hmm. that's how it goes. That's it. It's a dictatorship, not a democracy. So, so run me back. I've been, you know, golf a bit now, but I've been arrested a full, you know, nine yards. The bus comes. They're, they're dropping these people off. Take me from prisoner walking in. To then what you just said, getting the papers. Is there, is there a, a process that gets, you know, outside of what the uh, uh, prison officers do to what you do? I know there's a, obviously there's hierarchy and everything that goes on in there. So yeah, there's massive prison politics. So right when you get dropped off, you're going to be, like I said, you're going to come in with your bedroll. We're going to meet who you are. We're going to figure out if you're good or bad. That means if you're going to walk the main line, GP or not. I did my whole term GP in Cali prison. So we're going to figure out who the fuck you are. And once we know you're good, we're going to put you to work. I mean, you're, you're just going to be you're going to be working out with us. You're going to be programming with us. You wake up at a certain time. You eat at a certain time. You work out at a certain time. And everything's mandatory. You're going to work out every fucking day. We're going to make you a soldier for what we're doing, which is protecting our people. It doesn't fucking matter. If one of your people fuck up, you have to jump with them. And you're going to get a lot of time. If, if you're going to be doing any of this violence, any of these fucking gangster activities that go on in fucking Cali prison, which is straight gangland, you're going to get some extra time. And when you have letters on your knees like I do, SoCal on your quads, Dago on your stomach, my, that's, I have my, my initials on my chest, and then it says Dago on my stomach. That's my fucking license plate. When I roll up to a prison, they're like, oh, that's Dago West Watson right there. 
and they know who the fuck I am from far away. They're like, dude's a bad motherfucker. I've heard about him. You know, shit's going to change here. This dude runs shit. And if you roll up and you just don't got any of your shit on you, like, oh, this dude's a new booty. This guy's a fish right here. This guy's fresh as fuck. <laughs> and, like, you're walking around, you think you're, you think you're badass, but everybody's just like, oh, this dude, I watched him on the phone. He was fucking, he was soft as shit. Babe, uh, can you put money on my books? Oh, my God, it's so fucked up here. We're just sitting here laughing. Like, look at this fucking dude. When you've been in years and years and years, you've seen everything. Yeah. Uh, there's been times where someone comes in, they got bad paperwork. And the guy comes in and everybody knows he's got bad paperwork. Everybody knows he's about to get killed. Mm. And he's sitting there making his coffee, having his morning. <laughs> then some fucking sickening looking white boys come up to him. And they're like, hey, let's go get a workout out on the yard. And we're like, oh, my God, these motherfuckers, dude. And it'll be just some fucking face tatted, nasty, slung back fucking dudes doing the gang of time that are rocking that piece with them and they're they're gonna kill the dude. So they get they get the dude all pumped up. They bring him out to yard, have him doing burpees, have him doing bar work. The second he's all Man. pumped up, just fucking just start filleting him up and just there he is, a piece of meat on the floor. So when you've seen someone's fucking soul leave their body, yeah, you start to really believe that there's there's something more to this life. And um, I had just been through so much pain that whole time in prison. So much fucking drama and bullshit. Even a stabbing that I carried out in there that caught me a shoe term. I didn't think I was getting out. I've been through so much shit, seen so much murder, so much violence, mm -hmm. so much fuckery, and been such a part of it that I just, I'm like, I want more for myself. This is fucking bullshit. I don't want to do life in here. Mm -hmm. So I started to change. I couldn't change fully in there. I still had to put in work till the day I left. The day I left, I still had to put in work. This wasn't me changing and fucking like all of a sudden being like, oh, no, I, I'm following a new leaf. I can't do anything you guys told me. They would fuck you up. You I can't do that. Yeah. yeah, you couldn't You couldn't follow no, a new path. You had to still no. live the life while still consciously trying to incorporate new elements. 100%. So I went from, I always tried to live by the laws of man like most people do in society and the laws of man i would always try to break because i thought you could get away with shit once i started living by universal laws i knew i couldn't get away with shit so it didn't matter if i got away with it or not i never got away with it in my heart and in my soul that if we sold some heroin or some dope to someone in prison and they motherfucking peaced out mm -hmm. they straight died and overdosed god i just took someone's fucking son from a, i took someone's son from a mother fuck and as I started to become more, because the law of exposure states that once exposed, you can't be unexposed. Mm -hmm. So once I was exposed to understanding karmic debt and other universal laws, then I was like, I really can't get away with this. This shit hurts to be a part of it. So it actually was hurting me to be such a shit bag. So I finally elevated that level. And all you motherfuckers out here listening who think you're badass, you've never really been in a position to where you had to fucking really look within and realize we're being governed by something much greater, whatever you want to call it, our creator, God, the universe. You can't get, nobody will ever get away with fucking anything. You may get away with it and not get caught by the cops, but it's affecting your life in some way when you're a shitty motherfucker and when you're not just operating from the golden rule, doing unto others as we, as you would want done to yourself. And, and when did you kind of start having these realizations? You mentioned going in the shoe. Was when is, was it that personal time? That, that was one of the times. So, so someone was talking shit about my dip form. We were doing <laughs> dips. Oh, well, we were right, doing bro. dips. <laughs> we were doing straight dips. In, Point noted when dude, we trained together. Dude, in the, in the fucking, <laughs> in the block. So there was a dip bar in the block at yeah. this place and a pull-up bar. And we were doing dips and this fool was like, Talking shit, I wasn't going low enough, low enough or something. I'm like, fuck you, dude. Shut the fuck up. And you can't do that. Right. Like, to another white dude, I can't disrespect him in public like that. And he knew he had to do something about it. Uh. So he's like, he's like, what? Let's go, let's go get him up then if you're going to talk shit. Who are you talking to? I'm like, just fucking go, motherfucker. So I packed my piece. I just fucking went in my cell. I shoved my piece down the front. We have a pocket in the front. So I have a pocket sewn in my shorts. And I just put my shit in there. And I go into the cell. And people are like, oh, shit. Like this fool, because you can't just fight another white boy at some of these yards. You, right. You're not allowed to just fight. If it's the they, they level four politics state, if it's not serious enough for you to stab the person over it, drop it. Huh. Because we need the numbers on the yard. It's a great thing to p apply in yeah, yeah, real yeah. life out here. If it's not, if you're not seriously going to go kill this dude over your fucking road rage or the problem you think you're having, that you're going to have a hissy fit. Imagine how big a pussies people are out here. 
Mm-hmm. They're like going to cry about something, whine about something, yell about something, bitch about something, and they ain't even ready to do nothing about it. No, just more. So, yeah, and so in prison, it's like, if you ain't nothing to do about it, if you ain't going to do nothing about a homeboy, quit blowing that fucking hot air, bitch. What's up? Like, here, you, you got a problem? Well, here's the piece. Go handle it. If it's pissing you off that much, go kill the motherfucker. And so that's like a politic in there. So we couldn't even fight. So I go in the cell, and I literally, you know, I light the fool up. You know, I give him that fucking, that, that smile from ear to ear, just fucking through his whole cheek behind his ear, and about 300 stitches. And I end up in the BMU. He ends up in the BMU. We get sprayed. They spray the shit out of you, all up in your fucking, all up in your hair and your nose and your fucking shit. And the thing is, you're so sick in prison. You're so fucked up that, like, <laughs> we don't have, like, that much cell time alone. So they put you in a cell by yourself. You still go fucking probably jack off, and that shit's fucking. You do. You're, you're taking a, a, a you're taking a bird bath in prison. This is how you bath up. This is how you bathe in prison. You sit on the toilet. You plug the sink. You fill it up with water. And you get a cup and you pour it on top of you over the toilet. That's how you take a shower in most of these prisons because you're on lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't go shower, but you're so fucked up. You're pouring it on your head. They sprayed you. That shit's leaking down oh. onto your dick. And in your dickhead and just burning the shit out of your shit. And since you're finally alone in a cell, you're like, might as well hit one. <laughs> <laughs> May as well. Dude, but the, everyone's, everyone's always thinking like, oh, oh um, semen retention or something. That's why prisoners are probably so strong. <laughs> they, they, people are strong because they restrain desire. So if your real desire is, is sex or something like that, you restrain it, then you're building strength. If your real desire is snack food and you restrain it, then you're building strength. If your real desire is alcohol and you're restraining it, you're building strength. Mm-hmm. So the whole thing is, is like, you don't even do it. So many things are taken from you in prison that when you're able to just denounce desires that are not even available to you, you become mentally stronger. But anyways, I whacked this dude, end up in the BMU. Captain Weir comes strolling by. I'm like, hey, what's up? When am I getting out of here? Because they had already brought the kid back to the line. He's like, you ain't getting out. You fucking, let me see. I'll bring the photos tomorrow. He brings the photos. Dude's splattered. They always make it look so much worse than it is. It was bad. I was there and all, but they make it look like Hannibal Lecter shit or some (laughs) fucked up shit. I'm like, oh, God damn, I'm fucked. So I'm for sure getting a life sentence because I already have enough. I already have two strikes on this case. Here's a third strike. It just stabs him in prison. It's a third strike. And when are you out in your in your serving terms? Right? right here at this time, I'm in like five years in. Okay. And then so the whole point is is that they end up not picking up the case because there was a riot at that time. You guys could look up the riot NFCF uh, prison riot. This was a, a Corrections Corp of America in Oklahoma. So a bunch of Cali inmates are in Oklahoma doing California time with California politics because CCA, Correction Corp of America, shipped us out there to middleman us so we're not on the Cali roster because the Cali roster was overcrowded. Mm. So now we're out there just fucking running shit with a bunch of fucking Oklahoma rent cops <laughs> that we should work at Walmart, but we're just some really political California gangsters who, who are institutionally sophisticated who can get shit in that they can't even fathom what we're doing. Wild. Yeah. And so there was a massive riot and 180 attempted murders were handed out during this riot because so many people were getting booked. I mean, I see a motherfucker get his feet sawed off. Motherfuckers are getting what? stabbed. Oh yeah. They're just, dude, guys are going back in their cells, smoking speed and doing lines and coming out and just, just gutting motherfuckers. Where, where would you, where would you were locked down at that point in time, right? The, Certain blocks got locked down right. at certain times, but different blocks are popping off. Okay. Once they hear there's a riot, and this one, this one was between the blacks and the homies. Okay. And if the blacks and the homies riot, then the whites and the homies are against the blacks, the Asians, and the northerners. So there's blacks, Asians, and northerners on one side of the building. Right. There's whites, southerners, and paisas on the other side. Paisas are like real Mexicans from Mexico. Southsiders are the Mexican-Americans from Mexican-American gangs. And we're like, we're, we have a, um, we have like a, a, a pact where we jump for each other and then they do. So if this piece, this side of the yard goes off on this side of the yard, they all go off. So who, who is, who, who's got an alliance and, and who, who is again? The, said- the whites, yeah, the South siders and the Pisces have an alliance. And then the blacks, the others, which are Asians, Samoans, and everyone. And then the Northerners, they have an alliance. So they, Shit. we, everything's split down the middle racially. Right. So once something cracks, between these races, everything explodes and everyone's fucking killing each other. It shows it on YouTube. They have videos of it because they had to get National Guard to break up that riot. Jesus. So there were so many attempted murders handed out for that riot that they didn't pick up my stabbing because they had so many cases to do. They're like case overload, 
fucking like fuck it. Just give him the uh, fourteen month shoe, which is fourteen months in the hole, and then eleven months eight days is what I would do because eighty five percent of that time is a violent crime. So then during that time, I would just still wake up at my two forty five a.m. time that I still apply till today. I'm always working out by four, always reading something positive in the morning. I was just finding myself during that time. Like a lot of people sit there and bitch during that time, mm. but during times of adversity is when you solidify your core, who you are through your, through your self-talk and your actions during times of adversity, you solidify your core beliefs. So every core belief I'm teaching you guys and everybody on my Instagram, I built within myself during the roughest of fucking times in the shoe in Cali. Nobody has seen me forever. I haven't seen a family member the whole fucking time. Like I don't even exist anymore. I'm just a part of this system and I'm going to do it better than fucking anyone. I'm going to be covered in gang. I'm going to be fucking 220, doing 20, sets of 20 pull-ups, fucking 20-inch arms, just a motherfucking savage. That was all part of this bigger plan that I see now because, I mean, everything that you're drawn to is inseparably connected to your purpose. So I was drawn to this gangster-ass figure, and most people, if they listen to society, they'd be like, oh, that's not right. But that's the guy I listen to. Mm. I'm not going to listen to some square-ass cardigan-having bitch of a motherfucker talking about, yeah, like, you're supposed to have generational wealth, Wes. Like, Get the fuck out of here, bitch. You fucking smack your ass. I listen to that gangster-ass motherfucker with Rolls Royces and shit. That's who I listen to, that motherfucker who's got every car I've ever liked. He has the pad. He has the hot chick. He's jacked. He'll fuck you up. He'll probably stab your fucking eyes out and shoot you in the fucking mouth. That's who I listen to. So I had to create the man that I would fucking listen to. And that's what my goal was. Because I sat down on my rack one morning, and I came up with this quote of what our life's purpose is. And our life's purpose is to create the individual, individual you admire and then give that person to the world. And so all the time I see people trying to be people of influence out here. I'm like, motherfucker, would you listen to you? Do you see you on camera? Mm -hmm. Like I would listen to a jacked ass motherfucker like Flex. Like, but you have to at least be jacked. If you're not jacked, I cannot listen to you. I don't give a fuck how much money you have. <laughs> like your bitch is around for the money. You're not even jacked, fool. Like, what does she think you're funny or something? I don't want to be someone's fucking comedian. I want to be like, fuck, that dude's a beast, you know? You threw me off with a lot of fucking... I, I talk a lot of shit. I say a lot of shit. No, it's great. It's great. I'm trying to think. You mentioned... Um, I'm taking it back. Sorry, Wes. I'm all over the place. Don't stab me. Um, I am... Um, <laughs> I, would, I, I would listen to you in some areas. Like the bodybuilding, all the yeah. shit you've done in life, you're someone to listen to. Yeah. A lot of these motherfuckers are speaking. I'm like, do you see that you have... Your face barely fits in your profile pic, bitch. You're fat. You're talking about discipline. How are you fat talking about discipline? Because you have some money? Like mm. that's... Could have got that anyway. True discipline is fucking when you're actually mastering self. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was after. Because self-mastery depends on self-honesty. I see a lot of people out here who aren't fucking honest. They may have some coins, but that's my whole thing. Mm -hmm. is to make a new level of man. And I say he's ripped, he's rich, and he's rare. Obviously, we know what ripped is. I mean, you better be fucking single-digit body fat with veins everywhere, busting <laughs> out your skin. That's ripped, you know. Dick skin, like, fucking year-round, <laughs> motherfucker. And then, uh, and then what's, yeah, what's, skin. what's rich? I mean, fuck man, you got it. Motherfuckers got m motherfuckers, not compromising. He's not like, Oh, I'll just take the Audi SUV. Cause it's the same as the Lambo one, but I really want the Lambo one, but I'm too big of a pussy. You know, I like the motherfucker who don't compromise. He's like, no, nah, I want that. So I'm getting that. Mm -hmm. Like I just traded in my old F8 Ferrari for SF 90. I get what the fuck I want. I bought that shit when the Ferrari dealership was closed. I called him. I said, let me get that shit. They opened that shit up, and I fucking bought that shit cash the other day. But these are the people I would listen to. Mm -hmm. The man who don't compromise, the man who's ripped, and the man who's rare. What's rare in my eyes? Rare in my eyes is a man who holds his fucking word no matter what. Rare in my eyes is a man who don't use fucking drugs, alcohol, none of the above. Rare in my eyes is that man who fucking who emulates it, who lives it, mm -hmm. who personifies the teaching so others will wish to learn. That example. Rare is the man I would listen to, and there's very few of them. Like you have to be, you have to be, you know, multimillionaire a year earner. You have to be in great fucking shape and you have to make fucking sense for me to even fucking listen to you. All too often people try to give me advice or other people advice. And I say, wait, motherfucker, let, let me get this straight. He's like, what, what? I'm like, if I listen to you, I end up where the fuck you're at. And they're like, oh, well, no, I'm just giving advice. Yeah. So you're giving hypothetical advice about something you think might work because other mm -hmm. people said it. Have you done it, bitch? 
And the dude's just like, well, fuck. Like, I'm like, dude, if I listen to you, will I fucking end up like you, motherfucker? And they start backpedaling real quick. I just think hypothetical is hypocritical. Yeah. Like, you're telling me hypothetical scenarios that are going to work, and you've never done a motherfucker? Wes Watson only talks about what he's done. And I've done a fucking shitload in the even five years I've been out of prison. Mm-hmm. Like, the, so the whole thing is, is stop listening to people who aren't embodying their teachings. And, and talking of embodying your teachings, you, you had this, this uh, um, personal plan that from the moment that you got out of jail, you knew and announced to the world that your first Instagram post in color oh, was yeah. going to be your, your release in a sense. Yeah, re- re-emerging. So yeah. I posted in black and white from 2014 on my Instagram, in black and white, in, in prison, you guys. In prison. You guys can't even get your posts up out here every day. <laughs> So look at I'm in prison having a fucking an essay from Maravilla named Mongo sit on my phone and fucking charge my motherfucking phone for me while little man from EMF is sitting on my phone over here, my other phone charging it. And I got phones all over the block. Two phones. I had, I have ten phones at some times. Oh shit. Yeah, and I'm I'm charging people to rent them from me fifty bucks an hour. And these things are on clockwork, making me more money than people make on the street out here. Jesus Christ. I got more money than people do on the street while in prison in the form of green dot numbers in a fucking address book. And there would just be a phone number. It'd say like John, but it's really 500 bucks. Wow. It'd say like Paul and it's 500 bucks. I roll up to a place. I roll up to a new prison. I'd hand like three numbers to someone. Go get me a fucking phone. But anyways, I, tr- I posted in prison every fucking day from 2014 to 2017 when I, when I got released. Uh, December 17, 2017, but they're like, well, why um, why did 20, why 2014 did it start? That's when I saw Instagram for the first time, and that's mm-hmm. when I got my first smartphone. Mm. We had flip phones. We didn't have smartphones till then when I went to a different yard that had them. And then due to that. Oh, yeah. Time, okay, yeah, so, yeah. So I come out. My I go from black and white picks to a color pick. I was even making people's uh, macros and their training while in prison. Wait, you were doing fucking diets? For doing fuckers? diets and training while in prison. I have testimonials from guys in prison that I, I would have their side-by-side oh. pics on my Instagram while I was in prison. While they were serving? While we were both in prison. I'm putting their 90-day back-to-back pickup. So I knew what I was going to do. Yeah. I just had to get out and figure it out. So I get out and I said, no, there's a fucking app for this shit. I find an app to put my training on and everything. And I start just telling people I can make their diets and tra- training and nutrition. I start off making about 300 to like 800 a month. Maybe like 3000 on the best month if I had some signups, like right out the gate. And then some months were slow. I'm making 800 bucks. That don't do shit for you. So then I started telling my story on YouTube and other shit, and mm-hmm. I started blowing up, getting some traction. I went from fucking, you know, 3000 a month to 15000 a month to 50000 a month to 80000 a month to 150000 a month. I was still living at my fucking grandma's house, sleeping on a twin bed in the same room as my parents, making 150000 a month, walking to the gym. Everyone's like, why? People who knew me close, I wouldn't tell my family I was making that much money. Yeah. And people who knew me close are like, why don't you buy a car? I'm like, I'm never fucking up again. I'm like, I'm never not, I'm never being broke again, ever. Watch me. And I just kept, I had so much discipline. I kept saving. I didn't need to go impress chicks. I didn't have to go do all that. I just had to win. I can't not fucking win. Flex, I got to fucking win. I have to fucking win. So, I mean, the point is, is, I saved up so much to where I didn't even buy a car till I had like four hundred thousand, right, and I was making one hundred fifty grand a month. You guys listening to this? Yeah. He was sleeping in the same bed, the same house as your mom and dad, same your grandma, room, same, same room, room yeah. with four hundred fucking thousand. In yeah, the bank. I had, had four hundred in the bank and was making one fifty a month, and it was climbing, and I was still sleeping in the same room, eating canned chicken and green beans, walking to the gym, and just knowing like I I don't even fucking want to tell anyone. Wes, fuck. T- Man, get me into that mindset because I fucking love that shit. I'm yeah. a mindset guy. As you know, we've, we've had conversations. 100%. I dive into that. I, I, I've got my own story, which I'm not popping the can on. You know it. Um, but to be in that scenario and not be tempted to spend frivolously, frivolously on things that you've never had for fucking 10 years, man. Yeah. How are you so disciplined and what was the, the methodology behind that during that, that struggle? Because it was a struggle. There's no question. But the bank account kept on growing. I just had a bigger agenda. I knew what I could do. And I mean, so I just, I just, I didn't want to lose again. So I just mm. kept saving and I knew, I'm like, I need a, I made my first hundred thousand pretty quick. And then what happened was I owned rest, owed restitution to the state. So oh, once shit. they saw a hundred thousand in my bank oh, account, fuck. they took all the fucking money. All of it. All of it. 
So I had a hundred grand on my account and I owed like restitution for the, the victim of my crime. I'm like, yes, I got like a hundred grand. Boom. One morning it was all gone. They took it all out of my account. Like, how, how hard is it? Sorry. How hard is it for you then not to go, well, fucking, I'm going to go illicit route again. I just, I, I was so proud of myself for finally being yeah. in control that I didn't give a fuck about the outcome. I was just proud that I was in control and how I felt training twice a day, yeah. filming it, getting bigger and bigger. I was like 265 at one point, like veined up, yeah. you know, doing, dude, just think, I thought I wanted to be like a 300 pound bodybuilder until I, start, until I started getting that big and I couldn't even fucking tie my <laughs> shoes and breathe. Looks great. Yeah. Functioning fucking terrible. Yeah. And then, um, so then I just started, I really just fucking, um, you know, I just kept going. I just loved what I was doing. I loved yeah. that I wasn't drinking. I loved that I didn't have these emotional outbursts. I loved that I was in control of myself finally. So I just kept going. I really mm. didn't care about the money or the outcome. And then like start shit started happening. I went on like Bedros's podcast. Got a like Shut the whole thing. I, I, I always tell people. I always tell people, your first podcast is gonna suck. Your first post is gonna suck. Your first all these are gonna suck. But mine didn't, motherfucker. Mine went fucking viral as fuck because of who the fuck I already was before I pitched that shit. Yeah. My YouTube, my first post on YouTube. Look at it. It has six hundred thousand views. My second has three point seven million. Like who the, and then the thing was, is I went on another uh, YouTube channel and it went viral as fuck. And then people were just like, dude, drop a YouTube channel, drop one. I had a hundred thousand subs in 28 days, 28 days. I had a hundred thousand subs, but then I started thinking, man, this was all ordained. This was destined from above. Like I had to go to prison, go on that hero's journey. Like Joseph Campbell says, I had to go on that hero's journey. I had to create the man that I, I originally would listen to. I had to make him better, make him undeniable, bring him to the streets, and then teach other people how I healed myself. So essentially, I just healed all these weak parts of me, mm. and then I came out to teach others to do the same. And since it was more valuable to me than even that money I was making, because I wasn't even spending it, it was more valuable to me to feel good. Mm. I was really able to sell that and bottle it up and package it good because it really meant more to me than the money. And then now, even till this day, people probably see my life and they see I have nine exotic cars live in a 20,000 square foot, you know, $30 million house and have all this shit. And they still think that they see that shit over me, but I still haven't missed a wake up time. I still haven't missed a workout. I still haven't missed a post because I literally validate myself with the work Mm -hmm. more than the result. Yeah. You lived that fucking life, man. You and I, when when we first met in person, um, in, uh, Utah, right? Yeah. Um, you were telling me a couple of stories, and, and my wife was with me too. And she was like, "Oh my god, this guy is." There was a lot of things that you say that I remember. You probably just have said it so you know to so many people. But for me to you, it was just you and I talking. And my wife was there too. My wife walked away, and she was like, "Man, he's so cerebral. It's it, he said such um, impacting things, and it wasn't a fucking seminar. We were just bullshit. Yeah, we were just right? chopping it we were up. just chopping it up. And I walked away. I was like, man." This is this is a good dude with a with a message that is being lived, you know. Well, I I really feel like we're fucking we're just instruments, like we're vessels, and when we're aligned, we're an antenna, and we're hearing mm-hmm. that message clearly from above of what we're supposed to be below. Mm-hmm. And I just report above. I'm not gonna say it's Jesus or it's God or it's our Creator or the universe. I don't fucking know. You just know something. I just know we're all being guided from. Yeah. Like that voice inside of what we're supposed to, the path we're supposed to walk, the motherfucker we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to live. And I just live by what I call conscience congruency. Conscience congruency. Yeah, your conscience is the authentic voice of creation of the universe of God. And if you really listen to that voice, you will create the perfect life down here. Mm. And what people don't realize is they're trying to orchestrate it too much instead of just really listening out what needs to change and changing it. That's how I moved so quick. I been out five years and I got out with 200 bucks and I got out with 200 bucks five years ago. I mean, I just bought an SF 90 cash the other day last in the last month, about $2 million in cars, cash, 2 million in cars, cash while having more expenses and bills than people could fathom. I have 400,000 in expenses a month. So, I mean, we make almost $2 million a month though. Mm-hmm. So a couple months of rolling and riding, I mean, I could do whatever the fuck I want, but guess what? I just want to get up at 245 again. Every day. I just want to hit that with those weights again. I, I just want to see them big old kids in the gym that are 25 and they're like, Wes, I just want to be jacked. <laughs> I'm like, I fucking love you guys. I, I, the pump is the cure for me. Yeah. I'm very negative. I'm very, 
I'm inherently negative. Like it's instilled in me to be negative and angry. And um, in what sense? It's I, I wake up angry and negative, and it's a gift. Hmm. So I wake up angry and negative, and I have to chip away at that with positive acts. Hmm. So I think it's a gift when we those negative attributes we have, and if we have positive acts like I do, where I wake up, my two forty five a.m. wake up, I tell myself it's not about me. Mm-hmm. This is me showing that I'm grateful for my life. And then I go into a post that I write for everybody, and this is like me reflecting on what is valuable to everyone and I, my intent of the morning is to distribute what's in my heart that I feel will help everybody. I only think outwardly. Like I've studied stuff from a lot of people, but Rudolf Steiner stuck out to me a lot um, when he said, um, the highest of beings, they only know their existence by what they transmute. So I'm trying to get to a level where I don't even know Wes Watson exists and I'm just at a level of servitude for others. So there's no pain when you don't know your existence. So I'm just creating this individual that I would listen to and then I'm serving the world with his example. You don't really have to sit there and fuck. It. I mean, it's so much less. I'm not knocking it. But if if you think that you can have shitty character, be a shitty human and have all these things that you're not seeing because you don't pay attention and you could just go give to charity that you're some example, you're not, motherfucker. It's how you live. It's who you are. It's the energy you possess. You can change the world by just, the world's going to change by people changing individually. So if I get people to change individually, I'll do what, much more for the world than anyone could fucking do just by giving someone something. I have to change you. It has to be deep within. And that comes by people believing it's possible by you showing up every day. When you show up every day, you solve their biggest fucking problem. Their biggest problem is that they don't show up. So if you prove that you can show up every day, then they have no excuse. And, and there's this, the teachings that you do in all your classes and stuff, because I've seen that you've got, you know, incredible um, testimonies, number one. Yeah. You know, these are real fucking testimonies from people from not just the United States, from all over the world. All over. And then they come and they spend personal time with you. And I've seen them doing, you know, your, your workouts, which are brutal. You know, they're getting up at your time. They're doing things on your schedule. And they're getting to see, like, this and I fucking walk, talk, and act. I lead from the front. This isn't something that I just put on fucking Instagram once a day. This is something I live by. So the the teachings that you were giving back to other people, is there any testimonies that you've seen that people have gone on to do in, incredible things? I'm sure that it has been. Oh, yeah. I've, I mean, I've literally one of my guys came on as a, a firefighter. And he was like, I'm just slacking. I'm 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 overeating snapping at my kids. I'm not the man I need to be. I'm overweight right now. So I get him ripped. I get him in a way more positive mindset. And he's like, can you teach me to do what you do? So then I teach him how to sell the program like I sell. Now if 7,500 bucks, he ends up making $2 million. And now he has a company, a company, a brand called Superhuman Fathers, where he helps fathers get in line like I helped him get in line as a father. Damn. So this is what we do. We, we actually do something in life and pay it forward. Yeah. So what's that, what that's called is self-actualization. That's when we actually do something. We create our highest self. And then self-transcendence. I get people to transcend self actually they've, after they've become self-actualized, which goes along with Maslow's law, the hierarchy of growth needs as humans. Most people are very miserable because they've achieved a level of self-actualization mm-hmm. and they don't do what we're doing right here. right here, transcend self. They don't become the teacher. So right here, we're giving our time to other people to help them. And then once you become successful, that is your next level. Or else you'll just sit there and be bitter. You'll be like, fuck is the matter with these people? Like, why does everyone not understand this shit? If you don't go teach them, if you don't take accountability for the people around you or people in general, Mm -hmm. then you'll take the other side, which is just pointing the finger at them. And and this started, um, because listen, you've got a wealth of knowledge. And and what you've just said, you've quoted some of the biggest philosophers and and some of the most incredible sort of um, teachers in the world in this just short 30, 40 minutes of being on this podcast. And there's so much more that I know you you can spit for the podcast viewers. But did these, as I said, sorry, sorry, this information you obtained starting from inside prison, getting books and stuff like this? Or, or where was this, where did this thirst for knowledge come from and where did it begin? Because obviously you lived that gangster's lifestyle, as you said yourself, with your own mouth. And then there was this turning point. Oh, yeah, I just got high for my last time in prison. Wow. Last time in prison, I was pushing the white and the black in prison, heroin and speed, and pushing anything. Anything that come Inside. in, yeah, we would sell. And so, I mean, at that time, everyone was watching a football game. Someone made some prison wine, some fucking Pruno, we call it. Pruno. I took a little sip, took another sip. Everybody's watching football. 
I'd, I'd take a little bump. Now I'm off to the races. I'm, <laughs> now I'm down drinking. I'm, fi- I'm doing fucking lines of speed, huge ass ones. Jesus. And like, that's a lot of money, dude. Do big ass lines of speed in prison. And uh, there's people, it's called a 50 paper when it's like a bag like that big. Like one tenth of an actual street gram is 50 bucks in prison. Fucking Yeah, hell. and then, I mean, and people make happy cards where they soak the fucking card in, in a, like a water and fucking meth base on the street. And they put the card together and it huh. gets mailed in. They just pull pieces off it and they dissolve it and shoot the liquid or eat it. Jesus. So, I mean, there's, there's crazy ways to do it. But we were pushing a lot of weight at that time. So, I could loosely use the drugs. And then about for about two weeks, I went on a nasty bender, started losing my mind, fucked my bunkie up, beat the life out the motherfucker, and then um, got in trouble to where these people had to come DP me. They had to come whoop my ass. So I got my ass whooped. I was coming down on drugs, and I said, I'm fucking done. I started reading self-help books. I started bettering myself. I still had to mm-hmm. uphold the, the GP fucking Cali prison code. code, but I was just like starting to monitor myself more and knew I, when I get out, I'm going to be a better dude. I'm not going to go after, I'm not going to do anything that I don't have to do in prison. No. no one has to sell drugs in prison, but you do have to commit violence if they call upon you. So, I mean, I just quit all the bullshit I didn't have to do. And I was, knew I was going to change for the better. Now, by the time I was getting out, everybody knew I was going to do huge things. So I was already killing it on social media. I had like 10,000 followers. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Yeah. The cops were like, uh, the cops were doing this. They're like, Hey, Watson, uh, everyone's getting more time and write-ups for having their Instagram up, so you should take yours down. I said, what, do you fucking follow me? I'm on private, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> and that dude's like, we're going to find your phone. I said, you ain't finding shit. I don't have shit. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. They're like, take your page down. You're not going home. Bitch, I am home. Shut the fuck up. Get out of here. I am home. I am home. I've been here 10 years. What the fuck you telling me? Like the last day I was in prison, cops come in. Watson, roll it up. I'm eating my oatmeal. Like, I'm so heightened in macros and shit. I, I, like, cut down as much as I could in weight before I was getting out. Mm-hmm. And I, was like, fucking started carving up before I left to take that initial pick. Like, <laughs> no. Yeah, I, was, I thought I was, like, training for, like, a show, you know. Shit. But I was just skinny as fuck because we didn't have shit. Yeah. But um, the whole thing was is I always did everything at the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. And then when they were trying to release me, I didn't even care about going. Like, in all reality, this is life right here. This is life right here for all you motherfuckers who think you need that Lambo or that shit or this or that. You're not ready to get out of prison till you don't need to get out of prison. You're not ready for that money till you don't need the fucking money. You're not ready for that life change you think you need till you don't fucking need it. Because right now, if I gave most people my financial success, they would go ruin their life. If, I gave, if we gave most fat dudes flexes physique, they go fuck up their marriage. Like, they, their options start opening to you when you change. And you have to change with the big things like your physique, your money, all your shit. You have to change with it over time or it will fuck you up. You don't have the emotional maturity, the financial maturity, maturity in general to even take on a new change in you like that. Mm. So that's the thing is um, people think they want shit all quick, but you, you won't even be able to handle it. It'll fuck your life up more. Yeah, it was earned. And again, it's got to be earned. And, and for yourself, um, and moving into them new chapters and doing what you've done, um, where where was that sort of moment where I was like, okay, I'm I am all in on this. Oh, I was I was all in, like right even inside when I was posting on Instagram. It just felt so good. Shit. And it was just people like reaching out saying, dude, I I, w- I almost wish I was in your position. Like one of the homies one time wrote me. He's like, I sold two million in real estate last year. And like, I made good money, but fuck, you almost make it look desirable to be there. That's the secret of life and social media. If you really love your life, you really love what you're doing. Most people don't. So they're just like, fuck, dude, that dude really loves what he's doing. Yeah. And having a structured process like I do that I don't deviate from and lie to myself with and fuck. Everybody has these fucking goals and they don't stick to them. It must feel like shit. What if you, what if like you're, what if honestly every day you knew you were worth more and you chose to be less? That's what I can't fucking deal with. And that's it, man. That, 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 that's what we walk around, unfortunately. People are so content. I don't have that mentality. I think I'm fat and broke still. I'm like, I'm broke yeah. as fuck and I'm fat as fuck. I, I, need, to, I need to work harder every yeah. fucking day. So what is that structure process? My process, Watson? I wake up at 245, have every day for 16 years. Then I go straight into some... Re- Six, let me just say this. 16 16 years, and I haven't missed years. once. Not missed once. 240. Traveling. 245. Don't never matter. got up no matter where you at. Oh, they're perfect. If, yeah. if they see that I'm traveling, I did a lot that day yeah. before, then fuck yeah, they need to see me get up again. Y- your boy's in the background. He's nodding. 
So yeah. I know it's all like day. fucking no compromise. Sorry, yeah. Wes. Too far. That, that fucking blows my mind. Yeah. And so many people couldn't do this for fucking sixteen days. Oh yeah. Well, the point is, is like most people would probably want to be in your position, but would you tell them, hey, just give me one month of living my life? Do this and, and let's see what you got. Two days. The the thing is, is sorry, bro. Your structure. Oh no, no, one hundred percent. The thing is, is like success is a byproduct of personal development. Success is something you attract by the person you've become. Your success will never exceed your level of personal development. So the person I've created is just f- so far superior that, like, I'll outdo you. It don't even matter. Like, I'll give you, a, I could give everyone the same structure, yeah. and we'll see who goes longer. And I'll just keep going. And that's the solution to everyone's problems. They can't yeah. keep going. So you're showing them right there. But So I wake up at 245, and then um, I write something in my journal. I read something. And I don't do that no more, but that's what I did. Mm. Now I post on Instagram, basically, my process. So what would normally be my journal entry is now a post to the world. Oh, shit. Yeah, so that's not my journal entry anymore. It's a post on Instagram to the world. Same thing. Same. Hmm. I'm giving that. I'm, I'm signing that contract to the universe of what we have to fucking do. Mm. I'm signing that contract to people. I'm giving them the guidance. It's even better to do it that way than to just have my journal for me. Now I'm doing it for the world. I'm showing them what I'm bettering in myself that day. And usually it's something about regret. Something you regret from the day before that has to change. Oh, shit. So it's like, you know, these thoughts or this or whatever. So after the after the journal entry or the post that I do now, I go straight into a 4 a.m. workout. I'm always working out at 4 a.m. That 4 a.m. workout is not to build muscle. Muscle is the byproduct. It's actually to remove all negativity inside me. It's actually to get me to that higher frequency. Because I always say your frequency is what you frequently see. So I operate at a high level, a high ass frequency. I operate at a high ass frequency. And look at motherfuckers are like, how do you deal with haters? I'm like, I don't see it. I, I, fucking, I, I love that quote, by the way. Dude, but I'm like, I don't, I don't I fucking yeah, love dude, that quote. I, I can't pass that. Yeah, Sorry, bro. I don't, your frequency is what you frequently see. Oh, wow. See, I don't, I don't vibrate low. Yeah. And, and if I do, it's because I'm low. Yeah. So people will be like, how do you deal with haters online? I'm like, you must be vibing low. And they're like, what do you mean? They're haters. I'm at such a high frequency. These frequencies yeah. don't vibrate. This low frequency of hate and the high level one of love and gratitude that I'm at, you can hate on me all you want. I don't hear it. I don't feel it. I don't vibrate at that frequency. Mm. So if someone tells you some hate or some fucking negative shit and you're vibrating at it, you're feeling it, you're actually negative. So Shit. I could walk out of the biggest pump of the gym and someone could be like, fuck you, Wes, you fucking bitch. I could get some mail I didn't want, some news I didn't want, so we could talk shit. I am I have such a good pump, I feel so good. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I'm, I'm going on my way. I'm winning. It, yeah. I wouldn't vibrate yeah. at that frequency. Yeah. So people need to understand the frequency of humans and low, you know, higher frequency emotions, low frequency emotions, and learn how to play that. Instead of saying, I'm this or I'm that, just, you know, Wes Watson is this or Wes Watson is that. We need to look at, am I in a low frequency state or high frequency state? So, yeah, man, I, I don't want to pop that bubble. Keep on going, bro. You, 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 your process yeah, just, of day, sorry. Yeah, so my process, I do the workout at 4 a.m. And that's to get to a high frequency because you don't wake up at a high frequency. You don't wake up with inner peace. These are the most coveted things known to man. They have to be earned. So how do we earn them? Positive acts. Mm-hmm. Positive acts that are creating a man that's actually a great instrument down here. So we're being guided from above to create this man who's a great instrument and orchestrating tool that's better for man. So once you become that and you report above a lot, you become an advocate. So now you become an advocate of this message above and you download it more clearly, more frequently. So I've been pushed to the higher part of the line, say, because for 16 years I've reported and said, what you got for me? Mm. I never say it's me. What you got for me? I'll I'll package it up and give it to the world. I'll do the work. I'll make the sacrifices. So you're getting yourself far in line for all this shit. But the main thing is, is after the workout, I'm just ready. And I go serve the world all day. Now, now I'm a coach to everybody. Mm-hmm. I'll purposely pull one of my cars up somewhere and just sit there. And someone will be like, is this yours? I'm like, yeah. Like, what do you do? I'm like, I do this. They're like, what do you mean you do this? I'm like, I was waiting for you. Oh. Fuck. And they're like, what do you, what do you mean you were waiting for me? I'm like, so what do you do? Guy's like, well, I lost a lot of weight. I quit smoking. I'm like, I'm trying to just live a better life. I said, want to know what? Guy's like, what? I said, I do that at the highest level. And that's how I got that. He's like, really? I started making YouTube videos and stuff. This really happened like a years ago. I'm like, that's what I do too. I'm probably one of the most viewed people on YouTube from this. And I show him, I say, look. I'm like, look what I do. 
I put this, I put this link here, I make all this content, this link goes to this app, I sell people through this app. Look how much I've made today. Oh, you, you don't mind showing people this? I'll show them the whole shit, and it's a normal guy. And he's like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's what now, I'd be. Now he just got <laughs> expedited. Like, yeah. he just got, he's just got the straight confirmation that what he's doing can amount to something great. And it's something amazing, which is, he wants to help people. Yeah. Like, in all reality, it seems so cliche helping others, but... Let's just say, like, helping others, you don't give a fuck about it. It doesn't do anything for you. When you're thinking about other people, you're not inwardly reflecting on self. And when you sit there and you have that self-absorbed self-talk, that inward reflection of self all day, it makes you very negative. You're not supposed to think about yourself all day. You're supposed to be thinking about and serving others. Like, the greatest pain you'll know is to sit there. And that's what depression and all that shit is just selfish. I don't have, why is my life like this? I'm not getting my way. Why don't I have it? They're selfish as fuck. Someone who's depressed has the most, if you played their self-talk on an intercom, you'd be like, that is the most selfish person alive. Yeah. And then if you played mine, someone who has inner peace, you'd be like, what do these person, these people need? What should I put out for them right now? What's going to really help them? And I'm just thinking about everyone else all day. So I'm admonished of that punishment mm. that is self-absorbed thinking. Which is actually depression and all this shit. People hate when I say that. Good fuck, you hate on me for it. <laughs> I don't vibrate with your hate. You can go ahead. <laughs> I'm way above. You don't vibrate. But yeah, the whole thing is, is I want to leave people with another thing. They always say like, how did you change? How did everything change? I'm yeah. like, I didn't change. I didn't fucking change. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, the world is not as it is. The world is as you are. So I had the same level of inner peace in prison as I do now. And the second I'm not at peace because of my own choices... All my blessings and all my shit goes away. And they're like, what do you mean it goes away? I'm like, it's still there, but I can't see it or feel it or experience it correctly. Mm-hmm. So that's why so many people have so much, but they're like not able to experience it and love their life correctly because they're not living in alignment. They're not living in congruence with their conscience. Is is there an end cap to, to what you want to achieve and what you're doing right nah, now? My, my only goal is to be the best man I could be every day. That's it. Like, if I don't break character, meaning I don't break on my diet, I don't yell at someone all crazy, mean. To, if I don't put bad energy on people, you guys remember this. You want to live a great life? Control what you release. So, in all reality, what you release most completely, you possess most completely. So, if I want to feel good, I release good. And it doesn't have to be lies. Good, good can still be compression. Like, if you're telling someone a lie just so you think you feel good, that's wrong. Love ain't lies. You want to tell them the fucking truth. Truth hurts. Yeah, and you want to help them. Like, you want to you want to assist them. So, I just want to be a good man every day. I don't want to break character. Because I don't give a fuck if I lose everything. I still never broke character. I still kept my own validation of self. I validate myself with who the fuck I am. It doesn't, it doesn't feel any different. People say that, like, it's, it must. I stroll around like a mega mansion. I have every fucking thing. I have millions. I could do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. But... I just want to wake up early and be a great man again. That's it. There's still no compromise. That's what I was going to ask you, too. Has has this, the mentality you had when you lived with your grandmother um, and you had that money in the bank, is that the same kind of mentality now you've got? Yes, you've been able to buy things now. That's the different aspect of things. You've got a, the house and everything else. Is there, has there ever been that little, you know, uh, caught you, that little bitch inside you that said, ah, oh, it's okay to take the snooze today? No, I just, I just have a big fucking mouth. So I have the biggest fucking mouth. I talk so much shit that I can I can never not be what the fuck. And that's what I want people to I do. I love it. I want people to write fucking checks that they can cash. I don't, most people write checks their ass can't cash. And the, and the whole thing is, is like, do you realize what you did? You were just telling your wife, it's my year. I'm going to kill it. And then you didn't. You were, your kids watched you go to the gym every day and not get in shape. Like, do you know how much they're not going to go to the gym now? They're like, I may end up like my stupid bitch of a dad who goes to the gym every day and is not swole. What a fucking lame. Like, you guys, you're fucking words on everything. Like, literally get fucking results. If you don't get results, you're selfish as fuck. Like, if you show everyone you're doing something and you don't get this massive result, you are so fucking selfish. You're making everybody deter from what's best for them. And and I know that, listen... um, Fuck now, Wells. I could talk to you fucking whatever, bro. Dude. I know that you have flown in 
and you just doing this podcast, which first of all, mate, I really appreciate. Oh, it's the best. You I came love in this shit. on the fucking jet. Yeah, we to come we, and see we your boy flex. Jet, we, we flew on the jet here. You know? <laughs> just, that's not even a flex. That is your real life. Yeah, we're rolling. He ta- he, he, for all the fans who kind of are going to see us in the the, the future, um, he done us Instagram Instagram post yesterday, and um, both him and his boy are walking to the jet. Straight out to the rolls, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, rolls, rolls to the rolls to the jet. To the fucking, how we do it. Right to the jet, and he's like, "I'm gonna be in Vegas tomorrow with flight, bro." You know, many people fucking hit me up because of that. Do I have what a time big, is he coming? I have a big fucking dude. <laughs> you have a line out for in your gym if I say some shit like that. But that's <laughs> that's what we want. We want yeah. to push people to be better. I want to make a solid, disciplined, mm. fucking real man the most attractive thing on the planet. Because mm. weak men. Will ruin our fucking world. Well, that's what's being pushed right now. One hundred percent. There's more West Watchers needed. We need that. And um, getting back to the jet side of things, I know that that thing is going to be wheels up in literally like forty minutes or so. Yeah, we got to dip. And you have to dip, um, bro. I truly appreciate it. You are the fucking man. And um, one thing I have to say is, you, solely you, got me on the four a.m. kick. I'm you not too f- fucking forty five yet. Yeah, you got to do it. But four four a.m. is fine. It was you that got me on the four a.m. You hit right, for you, means world. You hit you hit the fucking hit me hard with a message. My my podcast uh, producer knows that that is a non compromise for me. Now my wife gets up at four a.m. as well. God damn, that's the best. When you start doing it, and then they start doing it. Don't you fucking realize that when you don't do it, they won't do it. When you do do it, they will do it. What the fuck? It goes back to what you said. Actions, basically, in layman's terms, speak louder than words. Yeah. You fucking lead from the front. I'm the man of the house. I'm doing it. What fucking point am I proving if I say I'm going to do it and I don't? Oh, my God. The the dad, the husband, the Kids. man. who They're watching you. Kids always fail to listen to their parents, but they never fail to emulate them. They're yeah. going to follow you. And if it's you're a fucking weird. half-assed motherfucker, you're going to push that on to them. Or yeah. they're just not going to respect you. Mm-hmm. The thing is, if you don't respect you, they're not. And they know, listen, my, they, they know that dad... Their dad has that story of coming to this country. I, by the way, I don't know if you know this or not, but I just got my citizenship after 15 That's fucking massive. years, bro. That's so dope. 15 years. Millions look, of dollars look at everything later. you've done, dude. <laughs> Fuck. But it's, it's finally there. So that's my bucket list thing, and there's a lot of other things. But again, to circle back on the small impact, which is turning into a big impact now, you had in that little conversation we had, little conversation, five, ten minutes, is I went back and I said, Fuck it. This is going to be my new norm. 4 a.m., that alarm goes off. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I fucking listen to that little bitch that says hit the snooze. It doesn't happen. It's it's the way you start your day is everything. No, I beat the snooze button. No, I beat the fu- no, I beat the fucking alarm. I'm sorry. See, this this is a thing. This is a thing. Like, I, I've had many posts where I put that. I put my wake up time is a cornerstone of my success. Because if I'm first up, I'm fucking first place, motherfucker. And I've just had that first place, I got to win mentality. Yeah. I used to stand in front of the door at prison, in prison. Every movement, chow hall, the yard, everything. I would sit there 30 minutes early just standing by the door. And people would try to test me. They'd be like, I'm going out the door in front of Wes today. I said, no, you're not. (laughs) You ain't willing to take this as far as I am. No shit. They're like, Wes, it's just the door. I said, no, it's not. You guys put the power into your lives. You guys put the power into your lives. It doesn't have to be a big, significant event. Actually, the most insignificant things, put if you place power into them, and you never break, like Flex is talking about, that 4 a.m. wake up, this is how, day by day, you construct an unstoppable, non-negotiable motherfucker. How the fuck do we top that, Wes? We got to do it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's sign. Part two is coming soon. I We're hope doing that's it for good. Damage. Fuck yeah, for I damage. feel we've only scratched the surface. Yeah, we've listen. barely even pulled the first fucking chapter. No, we had, and, and that's what I love about it, too. And I know a little bit more, and I'd love to tell a little bit more of my story, too. Oh, yeah, we want to uh, hear as, it. As we're growing friendship. But um, truly fucking amazing to have you an honor to have you on the on the straight of the you spot so much gold i don't even know my how my editors are going to chop this up it's going to be wes watson throughout the fuck a month <laughs> wes watson month um but pleasure we are going to get a workout in on the secondary we can't talk about flex magazines but they're full circling that motherfucker with us putting the work in in the gym in the future my friend fuck yeah bro thank you for having me here wes watson straight out the lair out